Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, we got our first session of 2022 in. Funny enough, we went all the way to Arizona to get it done. And uh, first time playing at this casino, the Lone View Casino. Uh, so I used to play over at Wild Horse Pass. And uh, so yeah, new new uh, casino room, beautiful room, uh, nice tables, uh, very comfortable, great chairs. Um, so yeah, good time. A lot of the same dealers that were over Wild Horse Pass, so very friendly dealers. Just a really good room all around. So I had a good time. Uh, we're on the list uh, for the 3-5 gang, and there's probably about 12 or so of us on the list. Uh, it's, a, it's a Wednesday night, so that game never got going. We played 2-3 to start the year round. Uh, max buying is 600. Uh, we bought it for the max, and uh, we just played uh, two hours, maybe like two hours, ten minutes. Interesting thing about that here in Arizona, they used to always do spread limit games, and the laws have changed, and they are finally doing... Uh, no limit hold them out here in Arizona. So I had to check it out. I have family out here in town, came out to see them. And while I was here, I had to see what this no limit and how it was going out here. But yeah, uh, no limit hold them out here in Arizona. Fantastic. Okay, the first hand of interest here. We've only been playing maybe about a round. Middle position player raises up to $8. We're in the hijack. We looked at an ace, nine of hearts, and we said we're going to go ahead and just make the call here. Big blind calls as well, and we're off to a flop. of Ace, king, nine with two spades. Great flop. Big blind checks, uh, the original Razor continues here for $15. This flop's pretty good for his range, I'm assuming he has an ace here, and probably with a high kicker, because uh, you haven't seen him do too much but just limp so far. We want to go ahead and uh, raise this up a little bit, build this pot a little bit before some scare cards come and make him slow down. So we raise up $40, uh, basically we make a pot size bet. A big blind folds, and the middle position player shoves all in for $150 more. Of course, we snap call. He turns over ace queen right away with just the queen of spades. So, uh, feeling pretty good. Just want to just need to fade a queen or some um, runner runner outs. Uh, the turn is a ten of spades. So, uh, definitely both straight and flush draws for this guy. Yikes! Uh, okay, come on, dealer, give me a clean river. And yes, there we go, a two of diamonds. Uh, nice first pot for us uh, here at Lone Butte, and we got our feet wet. In this next hand, we're in the small blind, and you'll see uh, we're playing a 2-3 game, but out in front of me, there's just $1, because uh, here at Lone Butte, they pull uh, from the small blind immediately for the drop. This hand, there's three limps to us on the small blind, and we look down at Ace, King of Clubs. Uh, we make a raise up to $15. Typically with that many limpers, I usually might want to raise a little bit more, but most of the opens so far have been for 6 and $8, so the 15 uh, feels just right uh, for the way this game has been going. Middle position player makes the call, as does the button, and we're off to a flop of 7 deuce 7 with 2 clubs. Decent flop for having ace king of clubs. I think maybe a bet out here represents exactly what I have, an ace king, but maybe not so much the club variety, and I'm hoping one of these players has something like pocket nines, tens that they can make a call with having overs. Middle position player makes the fold, and I'm uh, waiting on the button, and what, um, okay, the button never made the call pre-flop, so I guess it was a little bit of an over bet, $25 into a $30 pot. <sighs> Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention, Jeff. All right, well, we drag a small pod anyway. Okay, for the next few hands, we're playing seven-handed. We're in the cutoff. We're facing a couple of limpers, and we look down at three six of hearts. Of course, we're going to go ahead and raise this up to $10. I haven't played a hand in a while, and boredom is set in. I know, not the greatest raise when I got a couple of limpers in front of me. Only raising to $10, I'm sure to get some calls. But according to my boredom range chart, well, this is the perfect opportunity to raise. So what this chart shows basically is everything in the yellow there, when you're bored, Go ahead and raise it up. Give it a shot. Play a hand. The button in both the blinds make the fold. Under the gun limper makes the call. And the middle position limper takes some time, thinks about it, really gives it some thought, and decides to raise it up to $34. 
I think back to my study and I remember my boredom three bet calling chart. We take a look at this here and yep, right there, everything in the green. Well, that's something if you're bored and you've already made a raise, you can call a three bet with. And especially because I have another player to act who more than likely is going to go ahead and call the other $20 with so much in the pot. Best thing of all, I'm in position. And technically, I could actually four bet in position when I'm bored. But <laughs> we'll slow down. That's next level stuff that eh, maybe we'll get into another time. So after considering all that, we go ahead and make the call. Under the Gun makes the call as well. And we're off to a flop of King Queen 4 with two hearts. Under the gun checks, middle position continues for $35. Of course, at this point, I'm calling. We had a heart draw, and hey, we even have a backdoor straight draw. And it's 4 to 1 on my call right now, so we're going to go ahead and see a turn. And under the gun folds. The turn is a 2 of diamonds. So now we have a gut shot to the straight. Still have our flush draw. And middle position bets out only $50. Perhaps if he bet a little bit more, he could have got me off of such a small flush draw. But for $50... I'm going to call. The river, bingo, bingo, the five of hearts. I hit my flush. This time, he checks. So I guess he might be a little bit afraid of the hearts. And with a good size amount in the pot, I decided to go for just for a smallish bet myself. And I bet $125. He snap calls and turns over ace king. This is the same player earlier that had ace queen versus my ace nine that we felted. Unfortunately, he had limping in with ace king, the old boredom range chart. Comes through for me once again, and we're stacking some chips. So we move from boredom range into vlog range. And vlog range for me, if you watch my channel, of course, is five deuce. Love the hand, always play it. I call it the joker hand. And in this case, we're on the button. We can definitely win with five deuce. So we... Raise the 15. That's right, we raise it up on the button. Three limpers in front of us, and we raised a $15. Small blind calls, the big blind folds, and all three limpers make the call, and we are going to a flop with... 75 bucks free flop, right? That's right, $75. Man, if we can smash this flop with the five deuce of hearts, looking pretty. And, uh, yeah, uh, we did not smash this flop, 10 and two face cards. Uh, I checked around, turn came... Small blind bets out, $25 in the 75, and uh, yeah, don't know what the rest of the action was. I just know that we're going to fold. It was the only time we had five deuce this whole session. Had to give it a shot. $15, up in flames. This hand here, we're uh, back to seven-handed. We're in middle position. Under the gun is raised up to $10. Uh, Under the gun plus one's made the call. And it comes to us, we looked down at nine ten of hearts. Nice suited connector here. We're just going to make the call, see a flop. Uh, this plays well multi-handed. The button makes the call as well. So there's four of us to a flop of jack five six with two hearts. Both players check, including the pre-flop aggressor there. I, I want to go and get a bet out here. If a heart comes, no one has a heart. I'm not going to get any. I'm not going to get more money on the turn. So let's go ahead and build this pot a little bit now. See if we can get a little more in there and hopefully hit our hearts here on the turn. And we do have some backdoor straight draws as well. So we just bet out twenty dollars, half pot. And surprisingly, all three players do make the call. So we built a nice little pot here. Not really sure what hands to put all three players on, uh, but there's straight draws out there. Obviously, the top pair, the jacks, and then the other heart draws. And right now, I'm holding the fourth best heart draw. So we're hoping that we have the best hearts and that we can improve on the turn. And improve we do. Ace of hearts on the turn. First two players check again. And we're going to continue to put money in the pot here. I'm not going to go too big. I do want hands like King Jack and Queen Jack holding just the King or Queen of Hearts to go ahead and call. And because likely they're going to hit another heart there on the river. Uh, pretty slim. So let's go ahead and uh, put a bet out there. But again, not too big. I don't want to scare them all away. I want to continue to build this pot a little bit if we can. Now it does keep all straight draws probably in there and any sets as well. And we just bet $40 into a pretty big pot of 120 So about one-third pot. And unfortunately, all players make the fold. So I guess I was the only one holding hearts there. But that's okay. We take down a pretty nice pot. The very next hand, I'm putting notes in my phone from the previous hand, the 9-10 of hearts. And we get dealt Jack-10 offsuit. We decide just to limp here. Uh, again, just because I'm writing notes in my phone. And we put the phone back down. We're going to record this hand. And there's five of us that go to a flop. So uh, a limped pot, five of us, 15 in the middle, 
And the flop is Jack High, Jack 7 4 Rainbow. I bet out $10 and I get called by the player to my left. Everybody else makes the fold. The turn is an 8. And I'm first to act here. We bet $20 out. And he quickly makes the call. So we're sitting here with top pair. We do have a gut shot straight draw. I'm not putting money kind of aces, kings, or queens right now, but I am putting them on probably a jack as well uh, with maybe a better kicker. There's been a pretty passive table, so it wouldn't surprise me for him to show up with something like a you know king jack, ace jack, and just have limped in as well. The river is decent. It is a nine. It completes our straight draw, and I believe it is a little bit disguised of a straight as well. I bet out $40. I'm not sure he's going to call much more here with maybe just top pair and a good kicker. So we've got $40. He makes the call, and he turns over pocket aces. No raise pre-flop. I didn't realize, or at least I forgot, that what they used to do at Wild Horse Pass, and they continue to do over here at Lone Butte, is they pay for aces cracked, $100. So instead of trying to win a big pot, um, they just try to win their $100. Um, yeah, to each his own. Uh, pocket aces, crack them with Jack-10 offsuit, limping in. This is the final hand of the night we're going to go over. We ended up racking up uh, shortly after this hand here. Straddle is on. We're in middle position here. Uh, we looked at ace, nine of spades. We just call the straddle, uh, makes the check. So there's six of us to a flop. And the flop does help us. It is an ace, four, ten, a rainbow. It checks to me, and I, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and no one to raise pre flop. So hard to believe anyone has an ace here. And we're just going to go ahead and bet out $10. Uh, we get a call from the cutoff on our left, and all the rest of the players fold. Turns the three of spades. This now gives us the nut flush draw to go along with our top pair okay kicker. And we want to build up this pot a little bit more. So if the spade comes, um, we may not get paid then. So let's build it now. I bet out $35 and he quickly calls, which is great news. The river is the ace of clubs. While we didn't hit our flush, we did improve to trips. And I bet $70. Now, I'm not really sure I like this bet. I'm just hoping for a, a worse ace here, I guess, is what I'm hoping this guy to have. I, I, I didn't really think this through. I just continued betting, and I pushed out $70, and I didn't really think much of it. And I think a check here uh, may have been better, because ultimately, I'm losing to all uh, higher aces. I'm losing to ace four, ace three, because he kept calling pretty quickly here. And there's, But nonetheless, we were out $70, and he makes a raise to $200. And he has, he has not made a play like this all night. Again, it was a pretty passive table. They weren't raising much when they were straddling, which is why so many people limped in, knowing it more likely wasn't going to get raised. This is the same player that I just cracked pocket aces that slow played him. $200 is quite a bet. And while I have quite a bit out there already, we have about $130 out there. And it's only another $130 for me to make this call. But just the way he made the bet and the way he's been playing all night, at this point... In the past, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna begrudge. I'm always gonna make this call. I think about it, whether or not I'm right or wrong. I end up making the fold here. Uh, so that's what I decided to do. I ultimately I put him on a set of fours. I think pocket tens. He raises there. 
So pocket fours with five callers in, that plays well multi-way against so many players in, and he's built the pot already pretty good. And from just a call the whole way, and then raise, because I pretty much played my hand face up. I think it was pretty obvious I had an ace of some sort here. So I think a full house would naturally want to get all of it in there, assuming any ace is going to call with trips. Um, so yeah, definitely think about it for a while. But ultimately, we let this one go. So that's the play I made. Don't know. He didn't show. We rack up shortly after. Love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below as we rack up. Um, didn't have like any big hands, you know, no, it was great to actually put in a good winning session uh, No aces, no kings, no queens, no jacks, no tens. Actually, you know what? I believe I was dealt two pocket pairs all night. They were both pocket deuces I saw a flop both times and yeah, nothing materialized and we folded so um, a little over two hours. It's probably the first time I've probably did a session without any pocket pairs <laughs> whatsoever. Uh, so yeah, we were uh, making things work with our suited connectors and uh, playing our position well. A couple of hands, yeah, you know what? Uh, the rust was there. Definitely the rust was there at a couple of those hands. Uh, I, I wish I could have them back. I'd like to have them back. Maybe played them a little too passive. But uh, that's okay. You know what? You look at that, you learn, and uh, you be accountable to yourself. Got to be your own worst critic, and that's how you get better and continue to study and, and keep going with this. So we got a couple, a few good hands in here, a few uh, questionable plays for sure. I'm sure I'll get some comments down below. That's great. That's what we're here for. Uh, we all learn. We all look at it. We all play things differently. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was Wednesday night, a little bit of a passive game, but uh, that's okay. Well, um, really enjoyed coming out here, getting the uh, game going, and, you know, we're going we're gonna to run this up. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining me. We'll see you at the tips.